Welcome to Sunday Baseball on Fox Sports Midwest. We are the Redbird Rookies. Today the Cardinals take on the San Diego Padres. Go! This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. This afternoon from beautiful Southern California in San Diego, the Padres looking for a sweep over the St. Louis Cardinals. In terms of losing streaks, the Cardinals, three losing streaks of three or more games. That's it, three times. Fewest in Major League Baseball, last time it happened near the All-Star break. The season long is four games. The Cardinals looking to avoid the sweep this afternoon. Pat Ferris, Rick Horton, Dan McLaughlin with you. Welcome to Cardinals baseball. What that graphic shows you is that this late in the season, the Cardinals have been pretty good and very consistent. They have been extraordinarily consistent, and the reason they have is starting pitching. If starting pitching is good and the Cardinals are good from top to bottom in their rotation, it's very difficult to get a long losing streak. The Cardinals will hope to avoid a three-game losing streak today. They've got one of their best in Michael Walker. So Michael Walker goes today for the St. Louis Cardinals. It'll be Colin Ray for the San Diego Padres. One of their top prospects who's pitched very well so far. Waka, Ray, Cardinals, Padres comes your way next. as we get you set for baseball this is a military sunday every sunday they do this home games at petco park today michael waka gets the call for the cardinals and waka is trying to do whatever he's doing 
Thank you to the men and women of our military as we head to a break. Okay, let's. Welcome back to San Diego, California. The season series between the Cardinals and the Padres wraps up today. Every Sunday at Petco Park, it's a salute to the military. They'll be in full force here this afternoon. Michael Waka gets the call today, one of the best young right-handers in all of baseball. Thank you to the men and women of our armed forces. Baseball comes your way next. Cardinals and the Padres wraps up today. Every Sunday at Petco Park, it's a salute to the military. They'll be in full force here this afternoon. Michael Waka gets the call today, one of the best young right-handers in all of baseball. Thank you to the men and women of our armed forces. Baseball comes your way next. not hit it's been an ugly series but this puts it in perspective here in attendance 50 Vietnam veterans some of them POWs that are here this afternoon nine of them selected to take to the field and meet some of the current players current 
members of the military are here. And how about this? Raymond Chavez throwing out our ceremonial first pitch. Chavez, the oldest Pearl Harbor survivor at 103 years of age. Gives me goosebumps. Great moment here at Petco Ballpark. They've always done a nice job here in San Diego saluting our military. Let's take a look at the Cardinals lineup here this afternoon. Matt Carpenter will lead it off. The Cardinals hitting 253 as a team. Then Tommy Pham, he's had a good series. Johnny Peralta leads the club in hits. Jason Hayward, Yadier Molina, Steven Piscotti, Mark Reynolds, Brent Garcia called back up for the third time this year. He'll be at second base. And the pitcher batting ninth, Michael Wachow. So Wong and Moss from the left side of the bench. Borges Cosma Cruz from the right side. Iowa native Colin Ray gets the call today. He's won his first two major league starts. Very unusual for a guy to come out so well. And he's a guy that doesn't have a lot of, of experience at high levels of pro ball. First four years, he was an A ball pitcher. And this year he's come on quickly and has ended up here in the rotation at the big league level. So here's Carpenter who leads the club in home runs, RBIs, doubles, walks, on-base percentage, you name it. He's leading in just about every offensive category. First pitch, a strike. He was ejected midway through the game last night. And you talked about it, Rick. When Matt Carpenter doesn't swing at a pitch outside the zone, many times, because of his great batter's eye, he's right. And... There's the third base umpire that was behind the plate last night. He's had the most pitches called against him this year that have actually been balls but called strikes, most in all of baseball. Actually two years in a row, and you'd think the umpires would start to understand that maybe he does know the zone pretty well. Colin Ray, three pitches. Carpenter strikes out. What does Colin Ray feature? Our Hyundai pitch arsenal. Five pitch pitcher, four seamer. Doesn't throw particularly hard. About 91 92. Sinker, curve, a cutter, and a changeup. And the key for him will be not to fly open with his top side. That's very typical of young pitchers, especially. He'll at times pull the ball across the plate as he did there, kind of jerk it across the plate and lose his command to that outer half against right hander. 1 0 pitch to Pham. So fastball, cutter, curve, change, and his grip on the change, it almost looks like a split finger, but that's not what he's doing. Yeah, we call it a claw grip is probably the best terminology for it. You just kind of you just kind of grab it with three fingers and a thumb and just kind of spread everything out and just take take velocity off it. There really isn't much complication to it. It's almost a modified circle change where you've got more feel for your three fingers on top of the baseball. Three and one the count on Tommy Pham. His average has jumped up to 230. Multi-hit games in both games one and two of this series, including his first ever Major League Triple. Big gap in left center. Dan, a tough game yesterday for the Cardinals, and that may be an understatement, an eight-nothing loss, but we talked about the importance of every at-bat for every player even late in the game, Pham with a three-hit game. What does that earn him? The second spot in the lineup. 3-2 pitch to Pham. And a one-out walk. A look at the Padres' defense. Justin Upton in left. Melvin Upton, Jr. in center. Matt Kemp, nine outfield assists in right. Salarte, Barmas, Spangenberg and Alonzo along the infield and Austin Hedges is behind the plate. Remember Derek Norris took that ball off his wrist yesterday and not expected to play this afternoon. Brings in Johnny Peralta. 130 hits this year to lead the club. You wonder how aggressive the Cardinals will be with the backup catcher and Hedges. Their lack of offense and just trying to get things going. Mike Matheny said before the game, we've got to find some way, somehow, to score more runs. And you don't go through phases, you go through periods. And I don't think he's pushing a panic button, but... And that's thrown away. Pam on his way to second. He'll head to third after stumbling. 
poor throw and in there safely. So Pham at third with one out. Well, maybe this is part of your somehow, some way. Yeah. Make the other team make a throwing error and go first to third. There's the stumble coming up from Pham. He's looking over his shoulder and he doesn't get the right part of his second base, so he almost fell down, but even an awkward slide into third, so that was not a, a normal trip from first to third for Tommy Pham. Look at that slide. Kind of does the splits a little bit. Very awkward slide. But a break for the Cardinals. He's had so many injuries, you do get worried when mm. you see a slide like that or how he went around the bag. Here is Johnny Peralta. The infield is back here in the first inning. And Peralta lines to third, and it's off the glove of Salarte. Pham on his way to the plate. Two errors in the inning, and a 1-0 St. Louis lead. Boy, a lot happening on that play. Peralta doesn't get out of the box because he thinks the ball is caught, so he gets a late jump out of the box. Salarte's trying to do too much. Trying to get a double play to get Pham off the bag at third, and he neglects to catch the baseball. He's looking at third, forgets the ball, so Pham's able to score alertly. But Peralta, with a late jump out of the box, reaches safely. Here's Jason Hayward in an early 1-0 lead. You're Pat Murphy. You're thinking, this is the last thing I want to see my team do. You know, we've got them on the ropes right now. They're struggling. And that could have been an inning-ending double play. Should have been. Here's the momentum. We give it back to you. Yes. So an error on Colin Ray on the pickoff throw. That's his first of the season. Salarte, his eighth error of the season on what would have been an inning-ending double play. The 1-1. And we are three quarters of the way through the season, so it's not a small sample size. The Cardinals are ahead of three teams in the National League in run scored Miami, Philadelphia, and Atlanta. That's it. That's it. Atlanta on the verge of being swept by the Cubs today at Wrigley. Last check, it was 7 to 3. As the Cubbies are looking to sweep a four game set. From the Braves for the first time since 1968. Lined into center field, and that will drop for a base hit. Base hit for Hayward. Two runners on for Yadier Molina. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. Let's take a look at the last pitch. Jammed a little bit, but Hayward able to fight it into center field and. All the things that went poorly for the Cardinals the last two days, at least through four hitters in this game, everything's going quite nicely. A roll reversal because the Cardinals committed costly errors. You know, sometimes you commit an error, even at this level, you get away with it without any damage, but that was not the case the last two games. And you credit the Padres for making it hurt. The errors kind of got things rolling, but then they just started swinging the bat. And this is a team that does not hit very well. 13th in the National League as far as batting average is concerned. But they've so, had three big innings in this series already. Runners at first and second. We were talking before the game. You brought up a very interesting point. If the Cardinals win the game last night, and you look at the score, and it's a blowout, but it was a tight game up until about the seventh inning. Does Yadier Molina start today? I mean, this guy has got a ton of innings under his belt this year. I thought it might be a good game to give him off, although you always feel refreshed when you're playing in San Diego. The Cardinals headed to Phoenix, where it's averaging about 106 each day there, and maybe those are some days that you give Yachty rest, but I think, again, the Cardinals win. Maybe he's out today. One ball and two strikes. The last six starts for the Padres have been magnificent. 0.99 ERA, the last six starts from their rotation. 
Molina chops it to third, and it's past Salarte and into left. A run will score. Two to nothing, Cardinals. Perfectly placed by Yadier Molina and Peralta. Aggressively scoring from second base, and why not? There's the changeup grip, a bit of a claw grip, the spread fingers, the downward movement. Yachty places it right between third and short. Not hit overly hard, so Peralta able to score from second base. Here's Steven Piscotti. Michael Waka gets run support. He is one of the starters that does enjoy about five runs a game from the Cardinals offense this year when he's on the mound. First and second, the 0-1. Into right field, base hit. Here comes Hayward. He'll score. Yachty digging for third. That goes all the way to the track. They'll wave in Molina. Relay to the plate. Throw off line. Steven Piscotti, a big hit here in the first inning for the Cardinals. Everything looking up for the Cardinals in the early going. Pitch location down and away. Piscotti goes the other way. So this is a ball that's almost handled by an infielder and ends up being a triple, which means Yachty, you got to get on the horse, and he does. Yachty's scoring all the way from first base. Jose Okendo waving him very early on in that trip from second to third. He knew that Molina could score. What gave him that extra push? Piscotti, who did not hesitate going around the bag at second, and he was catching up to Molina. Here's Mark Reynolds. The infield is in. Ouch. As he hits the deck. Slow to get up. Seems to be all right. So four runs here in the top of the first. As Chris Conroy, the Cardinal trainer, is out to check on Mark Reynolds. Boy, sometimes it just gets you in the wrong spot. It seemed like a little bit of a harmless foul ball, but if it caught him in the wrong spot on that foot, that can be very painful. Here's the swing, the downward. Oh, and he did. He just drove it right into this left instep, maybe bottom of his left ankle. And by the way, Matt Adams... The Cardinals front office will revisit his status on Tuesday. He is down in Florida. And they're going to try to get him in some games by the end of this week. And according to some of the officials I spoke with, they will push him. They believe he's one of the players they're going to push and try to get him back up here. And you're running out of time, really, for that right. team to be playing. They go till about the 6th or so of September, so fairly soon... We'll see Matt Adams activated, and we'll just see how he responds and how ready he can be. 0-2 pitch. Reynolds pulls it foul. The Cardinals getting some very comfortable swings here in the first inning. If you're wondering, we just saw the ball girl field that on a foul ball. We spoke to Padres personnel, and it is part of the ground rules. The ball girls and those that are part of the security staff on the field are in play, so to speak. And last night we had a situation as Reynolds stays alive. If you missed it, a ball hit the gentleman there on the right. It deadened the carom, so Piscotti had a long way to go to get it, and it led to another run for San Diego. Well, it hit the ball girl first in the foot, then hit him. And Mike Matheny was talking about it before the game and said it's just one of those things. And, and they're in play. You don't like it. And at the end of the day, it really didn't make much difference because the Padres just kept hitting after that. And just part of the frustration of overall frustration of the seventh inning here last night. They had over 44,000 here last night. Their 10th sellout. 
They're starting to believe a little bit. Six games back. Reynolds pops it foul and out of play. It's another one, too. Reynolds a swing and a miss. And he's struck out for the 102nd time this year. With all the activity, now we can get to Rick Horton's highly anticipated Toyota keys to the game. <laughs> well, one of the keys is to just rely on your foundation. You've built a very good season, 32 games over 500. Know who you are and don't. Don't hit the panic button because you've lost a couple of games here against the Padres. And the second key is to have a sharp Michael Waka. And you wouldn't expect otherwise, and as you've mentioned, Dan, he always gets run support. Seems like we were saying that about Lance Lynn a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Now it's Michael Waka's turn to get the run. Greg Garcia has appeared in 16 games in the big leagues this year. Seven for 20. He's done a nice job. At Triple A, he was hitting 294, 20th in the PCL. His on base percentage was over 400. And for those who may have missed it in the pregame show, shame on you, first of all, for missing the pregame show. But Tyler Lyons was sent out to make room for Greg Garcia. And we, we do think this is the right move. They're trying to give Colton Long some rest. So now five players on the bench for Mike Matheny. Here's a one two. That's pulled sharply to first and taken there by Alonzo. The Cardinals send eight men to the plate here in the top of the first and pick up an early lead. 4 nothing, St. Louis. We'll lead it off in this Padres lineup, followed by Spangenberg and Kemp. Kemp riding a 14-game hit streak. Then Justin Upton, Yonder Alonso, Melvin Upton Jr., Austin Hedges, Clint Barmas, and the pitcher, Ray. The Cardinals have Michael Walker going today, and that's a look at their bench. Amarista, Jankowski, and Wallace from the left side, Jerko and Norris from the right side. And Michael Waka went right, one of the best in baseball. Last three outings for Waka, 20 innings total, 19 strikeouts, 2-0 and in those games, and really been a bounce back for him. He had a couple of kind of so-so outings in a row, but he has gotten back into form. ERA top 10 in the National League. And he's having a big season. He's trying for win 
number 15, and there's only two in the National League with 15 wins. That's Bumgarner and Arietta. And the Hyundai pitch arsenal for Michael Walker. Forcing fastball changeup that can be devastating. A cutter and a breaking pitch. Walker tied with Garrett Cole with those 14 wins. One back is Rick mentioned of Bumgarner and Arietta. Fastball at 94. Zach Cranky with 13 wins, then DeGrom with 12, along with Carlos Martinez, 12. Two balls, one strike. Solarte has hit three home runs against the Cardinals this year. Three of his ten. Popped up. Molina dropped it. I can honestly say I've never seen him do that. I cannot remember a time either. Way up in the air. You see Yachty dealing with the sun. He takes the mask off, so he does everything right, and the ball just pops out of his glove. See him losing it the last maybe few feet. That would be an error charge to Molina for prolonging the time at bat. And there's another pop up. Tommy Pham puts it away. That's the fifth air on Molina this year. Piscotti, Pham, Hayward there in the outfield. Jason leads the outfield with seven outfield assists. Then Carpenter, Peralta, Garcia, and Reynolds on the infield. Molina behind the plate. That's presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. You know, not to make it's not making an excuse for Yachty, but it but it also maybe points to what we were talking about earlier is boy, it's tough when he never really gets a day off. And, and when you see him make a play like that, one of the things I think of is not the guy's not a good catcher anymore, but he may be getting a bit tired. You look for little signs like that. Here's Spangenberg. Chased a pitch up in the zone. Batting 260. Both his home runs have come as a pinch hitter. A little surprised that Jankowski's not in the lineup today. He's giving them a little boost. Made his major league debut on Friday night. We saw the bunt and his speed came into play in game two last night. A strikeout for Wake, his first of the afternoon. Yachty sets up inside, hits the target, tails back over the inner half. A little hop to it. Here's Matt Kemp, the 30 year old two time All Star. Not the player that he was back in 2011 when he could have won the MVP that went to Ryan Braun, but still he's putting up good numbers. 74 RBIs, that's ninth in the National League. Paul Goldschmidt will see him tomorrow with 93. He may win the Triple Crown, Goldschmidt. One ball, one strike. Spent nine years with the Dodgers. Hit 287 with 25 home runs a year ago. And as he tells the story, when he was drafted, his passion was basketball. The Dodgers were at a summer league game to see a left handed pitcher. All of a sudden, they said, Well, who is this Matt Kemp guy? We've heard that time and again, haven't we? we have. Stories like that. That's how scouts earn their keep. They see things that other people can't see. And maybe even the player himself. Well, he mentioned that. He said his basketball was his passion, but as he grew into his body, baseball became a little easier for him. He said all of a sudden, you know what? Maybe I can be a major league player. The 2-2.
San Diego said two pitchers and Yasmani Grandel. Part of that five player deal to get Matt Kemp. And a ground ball hit left side. Backhanded by Johnny Peralta. One, two, three. Go the Padres. Good start for Waka. Cardinals on top. Budweiser, make a plan to make it home. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And visit your local Mid-America Chevy dealers for great prices and our all-new 2015 vehicles today. A strike to Michael Walker. The Cardinals send eight men to the plate in the top of the first. They pick up a four-run lead. Walker is hitting 146, no home runs, four RBIs. One ball, one strike. This is Hawkeye against Hawkeye. Both hail from the state of Iowa. That doesn't happen very often. Both born on July 1st. Walk in 1991. Ray a year earlier in 1990. Jeremy Hellickson of Arizona is the other pitcher that hails from the state of Iowa. I'm surprised to see that, Dan, that there's just three. I would have thought there would have been more than that pitching currently in the big leagues. Good friend Cal Eldred, who still works in the Cardinals front office in Roves in the minor leagues, is from Iowa. Cal was such a smart pitcher, I have a feeling he could go out there and figure out a way to get somebody out right now. Maybe not for very long. But Cal represented the state of Iowa very well. Carpenter struck out on three pitches first time up. Lines at foul. No balls and two strikes. Walk has 23 wins, third most in franchise history for a pitcher from Iowa. Art Reinhardt, 30 wins. Joe McGrain from Des Moines has 51. Joe now working with MLB Network. The shift on here for Carpenter in a 1 2 pitch. Joe McGrain, I thought he was actually from Kentucky, he grew up in Kentucky. I was surprised to see that note as well, but he was from Des Moines. I remember his rookie year. Him telling a, a reporter that he couldn't tell where he was from because he was part of a witness relocation program. <laughs> and he told this long story about an FBI trial 
that involved his family and he couldn't tell him and he was just making the whole thing up. Well, here we go again with Matt Carpenter who has words with the home plate umpire. And look who it is who rung him up. They appealed the swing to the naked eye. I didn't think he went. But there was zero hesitation from the third base umpire. Chris Sigal. Matt Carpenter was hoping they'd ask somebody else. Strike one on Tommy Pham. Here's an 0 1 pitch. Pham off of Ray. Gathers it and makes the play. Hits a bullet right off of Colin Ray for the out. Ray Garcia back in the big leagues with more on that. Pat Paris. Dan, it's a, no surprise that the Cardinals were looking for a little more offense, so they decided to bring Greg Garcia up. This is the third time he's been called up this season, so that's not necessarily the big news. What's the big news for Greg and his family is he gets to make the start today at Petco Park in his hometown of San Diego, and of course he's got many family and friends, about nine or ten, he thought, including his, his mom and his dad, uh, his Grandfather, of course, uh, originally from East St. Louis is Dave Garcia, one-time big league manager and a long-time scout. 93 years old, lives in the San Diego area, but a little much for him to make his way to the game today. So you will not see Greg Garcia's grandfather here, but you'll see many other members of his family. Outstanding play by Mark Reynolds as they just get Justin Upton. Good play by Peralta, too, and it is a good call. There's the ball in the glove, half a step. Reynolds, very good hands. And steps yonder Alonzo, the 28-year-old from Cuba. Moved to the U.S. at the age of 10 with his family. Played in just 84 games a year ago. He dealt with a wrist injury. And he was part of that big Matt Leto steal. And it's in Volquez, Brad Boxberger, Yasmani Grandel for Matt Latos. Seventh overall pick by Cincinnati. The Reds felt they could deal him because he was blocked by Joey Votto. And the one two is lifted into shallow left. The first hit of the afternoon for San Diego. On 
the road traveling and want to watch your Cardinals, subscribe to MLB.TV Premium for live or on demand of over 400 devices, real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. And it brings in Melvin Upton, Jr. Think about a young player that happens to play the same position as a star that has a multi-year contract like Votto. Kind of doing him a favor, really, giving him a chance to further his career sure. instead of keeping him stuck either on your bench or in the minor leagues. And, and or in yes, a position you, you, you can't play. You know, you, you force him to play the outfield, maybe. Make their value worse, perhaps, by doing that. Playing sporadically. If, if a guy can play, it's nice to give him a chance. Melvin Upton Jr. pops it up. Reynolds battling the sun and makes the catch. Wow. Sun is going to be an issue, isn't it? Yeah. Mark Reynolds fighting this the entire way. He's trying to get to the right angle to where the sun is not directly in line with the baseball. So you can see him kind of working around at the side of the ball if he could, trying to actually shield the sun with his glove. Not an easy play. In steps Austin Hedges. In between innings, we saw a long visit with Mike Matheny and the home plate umpire. I'm sure discussing the punch out of his third baseman today, Matt Carpenter. Another one that's high. Two balls, no strikes. Hedges a second round selection back in 2011. Last year spent the entire season at double A. Played in the futures game in 2013. came into this season as their number four prospect. They traded a number of their prospects away. The 2-1. And that gets away from Molina. Well, you mentioned it, Rick. You look for the little signs of a catcher's getting tired. Maybe you've seen a couple today. Well, I think they're maybe better said a couple of big signs this is just a pass ball he just doesn't hold on to it he wasn't able to catch that pop up and, and that's so unlike Yadier Molina and you know there are little signs just the way a guy kind of gets down into his crouch the way he runs the bases the way he backs up I mean there's just energy levels and just even looking in their eyes but I think there are a couple of pretty big signs that maybe a day off is is warranted for Yadier hard to hard to get him out though you like his bat in there or you like his leadership First walk issued by Michael Walker, and Clint Barmas will be the hitter. And that's taken for a ball. The Padres have raved. But Clint Barmas, still a good defensive player, but what he's done with the young players. And Barmas the other day specifically mentioned Royce Clayton when he himself was a young player. And how Royce Clayton took him under his wing and was gracious, knowing that he was at the end of his rope. Barmas is coming up, and Clint was saying the other day, it's now my duty to pass on that. The 2-0. And a fly ball into shallow right. Drops in for a hit. No throw by Hayward, and a run will score. Alonzo scoring the first run for San Diego to make it 4-1. RBI number 12 for Clint Barmas. Well, the Padres take advantage of the walk and the pass ball. In this inning, a little jam shot took it the other way. Waka having some struggles getting the right release point on his breaking pitch. 
Chop to the right side. Diving stop by Reynolds and gets it to walk out. Outstanding play from Mark Reynolds at first base, ranging to his right. Full extension, it looked like, too. We'll take a look at it as we head to a timeout. Very good play. Mark Reynolds. Padre Strand, too, but they get on the board. The Cardinals and Papa John's teaming up to bring fans a pennant race deal that can't be beat. For a limited time, fans can purchase select seats for just $7 to the National Series, August 31st through September 2nd. For details, visit cardinals.com slash Papa John's. I guarantee we've got a lot of folks that love athletics at Indiana State watching today. Colin Ray pitched at Indiana State, Clint Barmas attended there as well. Mm -hmm. The Sycamores from the Missouri Valley Conference, which is based in St. Louis. Peralta chops it to third. Salarte makes the play. One down. Coming out of high school, he was 6'4", 180 pounds. It really wasn't on the radar as being a pro prospect, but then all of a sudden he shot up again in terms of weight. Grew one more inch, 6'5", 205. Delivery came nice and free and easy. We've seen he's throwing hard today. He still had his moments, though. There was a time where he was in A-ball, four years in A-ball, not really going anywhere. No higher level experience yet as a minor leaguer, and he had considered kind of giving up and had a, the scout that signed him kind of talk him into you know, making some adjustments and trying to maybe do something different and went to Bert Hooten who was his pitching coach and Hooten former major league player really a good pitcher in his own right they used to call him happy Hooten 151 wins yeah very good very good knuckle curve and he's the guy he called him happy because he never smiled and even though he never smiled he really was and is a, a very friendly likable guy and he saw something in Ray and said you need to make this adjustment he kind of simplified things and got him to throw throw more strikes certainly and worked on commanding the zone and next thing you know he's in the big leagues tapped foul and he was swinging away on 3-0 the Padres were asked why Colin Ray why bring him up and what is a perceived pennant race for the Padres, and they felt that he was throwing so well in the minor leagues they could catch a little lightning in a bottle with him, and also he's considered one of their better prospects. They wanted him to feed off what's happening right now with this rotation, and why not? The rotation's been very good. 
I think quite possibly they've got lightning in the bottle on their bench here for this game. And Travis Jankowski, uh, we've just seen him for two games, but I would not be surprised if he doesn't go on a tear and become their leadoff hitter before long. One on walk, second in the game issued by Ray. Time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag MWDataStrongFan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Here's Yadier Molina. As a base hit, run scored in an RBI. We will be in Arizona tomorrow night. First of four against the Diamondbacks. 0-1 pitch. Lance Lynn and Robbie Ray. Ray is 2-9. and nine. Garcia, Patrick Corbin in game two. John Lackey and De La Rosa in game three. Martinez and Delgado in game four. And it's off to San Francisco. Great jump by Hayward. It's hit out of play. He had that stolen easily. We've talked about this being a good combination. Mike Matheny is a little bit tentative about doing this with Hayward right now as well as playing him in center field right now for the same reason he's kind of coming off some kind of cramping issues with his legs and they just don't want to push him you can't afford to have another player hurt so they kind of pick their spots with Hayward and hit and run but would have worked there if Yadi got that ball on the ground there he goes again pitch in the dirt and a stolen base for Hayward number 19 Hard to imagine that he surprised him after going the pitch before, but it looked like that. Didn't really give him much more of a look. Jason really stole that one standing up. Molina pulls it foul. wouldn't say it's always true Dan but I, I've never liked a hit and run generally speaking with a guy that can steal the base anyway let him steal it then drive him in instead of getting the hit to take him first to third go ahead and let him steal second then drive him in put you further ahead in my mind you hit and run with somebody you feel like you have to protect they feel that way maybe because Hayward's not at 100%. Could maybe. Be. Could be. The 2-2. Two -two. Three and two. With Scotty on deck. Cardinals, if you're just joining us, picked up four runs in the first. They lead it four to one. The Scotty had a triple that scored two. That's a happy fan right there. 3 2 pitch. Hit out of play again by Molina. Really, both pitchers are hanging a lot of breaking balls in the early going. Ray's doing it. Waka did it in that second inning. And it's like they're just not pulling it down and, and getting a sharp break. And the Cardinals need to take advantage of that right now and just get on Ray. Already with 60 pitches in this game with one out here at the top of the third for Ray. Up the middle. It's off the mound. Taken there by Barmas to his left. Hayward advancing to third. So the stolen base, you avoid the double play. Scotty had a rough night here last night. 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Of course, he was not alone. 16 Cardinal punch outs. Ian Kennedy had 10 of those in the start, but Piscotti dropped down in the lineup. Mike Matheny thought maybe just a different place to put him in the lineup might kind of refresh him a bit. And a good
good start to this game with a triple to right. Scotty originally drafted by the Dodgers in 2009 did not sign played at Stanford and picked up by the Cardinals. Two balls no strikes. Reynolds on deck if Steven can reach. Where would the Cardinals be without Piscotty with all these injuries. Hit to the left side. Barmas charges and makes the play. The stretch by Alonzo. St. Louis strands their second runner of the afternoon. Midway through three. 4-1. Here's 6K run on September 13th. Start your race at the Stand the Man statue, run through downtown, and finish on the field at Bush Stadium. For more information and to sign up, head to cardinals.com slash 6K. The top of the lineup, Solarte, Spangenberg, and Kemp. The Pirates will play later tonight. Finish up their series with San Francisco. Ryan Vogelsong, the former Pirate, pitching for the Giants against Francisco Liriano. Salarte so lined out to center first time up. 0 for 1. Little flare into shallow left. And that drops in for a hit. Perfectly placed off the bat of Salarte. Long way to go for Johnny Peralta. Ball wasn't in the air long enough for him to run it down. There's the jam shot, little flare the other way. Over the head of Carpenter. Peralta closest to it, but no chance to make that play. Adrian Beltre, by the way, playing in game number 2,528 today for Texas. Becomes the all-time leader in games played by a Dominican-born player. Mm. And how about Texas? They are right now second in the wild card. So they would be in if the playoffs started today. Just jumped ahead of the Angels. And you look at the wild card races, they're going to be fun over the last 40 games. And the American League is really tight right now when you look at the wild card possibilities. Toronto, Texas, then the Angels a half game back. Baltimore won. Minnesota, game and a half. Tampa Bay, game and a half. Detroit, Chicago, four and four and a half. That's up and in. Second baseman of the Padres struck out his first time up. The lone K for Michael Walker today.
They're in the eighth. Chicago with a 9-3 lead at Wrigley Field over Atlanta. Cubs started play today. Six and a half back of St. Louis. Three back of Pittsburgh. Garcia will get the lead man. And that's all they'll get. We take a look at the BJC Healthcare Difference Maker. Pitching, pitching, pitching for St. Louis. Talked about that Cardinals being able to avoid long losing streaks, and this is why. You've got Martinez and Waka tied for 10th and earn run average. You've got Lance Lynn and John Lackey not far behind, so four starters. We don't even have Jaime Garcia on that list because he doesn't have enough innings to be on it, but microscopic ERA for Garcia really been a strong point for this season. Fastball in the dirt to Matt Kemp. Hitting 375 during this hit streak of 14 games. Even Yachty blocking that ball right there, Dan, it, it still seems that it just, just seems tired to me. Not saying not capable, it just seems like there's some signs that he could use it. Day off. I think Mike Matheny's having some issues, however, with that. You look around the team and you'd say, well, you know, Colton Wong's needed some time off. And maybe Carpenter needs a few more days off. And Hayward's still coming back. from. So you start to rely on a bench that has not been producing much lately. And so how do you give everybody the days off that you want to? And I think when you look at 16 strikeouts last night, that's a byproduct of not having regulars in there. And some of these bench guys being forced to play every single day. Reynolds comes to mind. Molina may be a little bit tired in some of the, the, the names and the players that you just mentioned. So the push will be for another week until you get to September and you've got more bodies here with the September call-ups. It'll be an entirely different story then. That's true of the pitchers, too, that may have been overworked a bit over the last couple of months. They'll get a breather. 4-1 Cardinals. The home half of the third. Two balls, one strike. Runner at first base. Seeing a lot of pitches up, as you mentioned, from both starters. But let's focus on Michael Waka. Waka's very fortunate that ball didn't leave the ballpark. It was fairly straight fastball, middle of the plate, up. Kemp saw it. Just came underneath it a bit. The 2 2. <laughs> two two pitch popped up. Long way to go for Hayward. In foul territory makes the catch. So Kemp is 0 for 2 and it brings in Justin Upton. Walker has hit 96. His hardest pitch today. Low of 74. I always look at velocity. You go back to last year when the shoulder issues began for Michael Walker. He was hitting around 93, 94, and very few times hitting 95, 96, which then did not offset the changeup, and he ran into issues. If you're talking about a mile an hour or two, maybe it's not as significant. When you talk about three or four miles an hour different on your fastball, it, it makes everything else different. The changeup also, which was a a plus pitch for Waka two years ago and last year just eluded him. I think the changeup eluded him because the fastball was not there because he wasn't healthy enough. There's the changeup. Justin Upton comes to San Diego from Atlanta. Last year he picked up his second silver slugger with 29 home runs, drove in over 100, finished fourth in homers, third in RBIs. Free agent to be. Remember, Upton was the first overall pick by the Diamondbacks 
in 2005 and at that time he was a shortstop. His brother who's on deck or rather in this lineup but coming up in two spots. He was the second overall pick in 2002. Their dad played football at Norfolk State. And for a long time was a Division I basketball referee, one of the top referees in the country. Only brothers to be selected 1 2, a combination in the history of baseball. One thing you get with Upton is power but strikeouts 123 this year eighth most in the National League Chris Bryant leads the league at 147 and Kemp's not very far behind him in terms of the strikeout total but you get through this part of the lineup Kemp and Upton and and you're doing something that's where you got to be very careful not to hang a pitch put something in the middle of the plate. Lead off single by Solarte. Spangenberg get into a fielder's choice. Kemp flight out, foul territory down the right field line. Two balls, two strikes on Justin Upton. Instead of check on Matt Kemp, who has, or rather Spangenberg, who has seven steals this year. Interesting question when it comes to team construction. Would you rather have two great players and seven? Kind of average guys in your lineup, or would you rather have nine good players? Mm -hmm. and I think the nine good players means more runs, and that's why I think this Jankowski can make a difference for this Padres lineup and maybe be a part of them going on a bit of a run. Little flare into shallow center, and that drops. Garcia may have gotten a glove on it, and two blue pits for the Padres here in the home half of the third. It's not for lack of effort by Garcia. Just eludes him. And the tying run will come to the plate in Yonder Alonso, who singled and scored the lone run for the Padres. Barmas had a bit of a flare hit in the second inning, so that's three hits in a row that haven't been hit on the nose. Runners at the corners. Alonzo, I mentioned earlier, he's from Cuba. We saw Despagne, who defected from Cuba, working out of the bullpen last night for San Diego. Their fathers actually played together in Cuba. Alonzo's dad was Despagne's catcher. And here they are in the big leagues. Fair ball and tagged out by Molina. Heads up plays. He pounced on that. not going to be reviewable any way you look at it it's just going to be arguable is it fair or is it not Yachty pounces on it gets the third out and Pat Murphy can complain about it but he's not going to be able to challenge it well this time Molina quick pouncing on this to make sure it stayed in fair territory Tagging out Yonder Alonso.
First pitch, a ball to Mike Reynolds. 4-1 St. Louis. Boy, what a heads-up play that was by Molina. Does so many things well, and we talk about him maybe being tired, but he sure didn't look tired on that play. He just jumped on it, saw the opportunity with a couple runners aboard to get that third out an easy way. Boy, Reynolds has had a few of those lately, hasn't he? Just thinking that uh, the other day he had a late in the game, big lead, high and tight, up and in on a pitch. Late in game one. Foul the ball off his instep or his ankle. And he smokes that into left center. That will roll to the wall. And Mark Reynolds is one for two today with a strikeout and now a double. And again, the Cardinals with a man in scoring position. After getting knocked down. Nice to do that. Turn on one. Dan, for those who may have wondered about that play with Molina at the plate, and many fans know, but many don't, that home plate is in fair territory. So as Yachty kind of picked up that ball on top of the plate, it's fair. Here's Greg Garcia. Strike one. Alhala High School here in this area. Greg Garcia, as Pat mentioned, many family and friends in attendance today. Grounded out to first and hit it sharply to Yonder Alonso. Driven into center field and the catch is made by Melvin Upton Jr. Two hard hit balls and nothing to show for it for Greg Garcia. Let's look one more time at that play with Yadier Molina to end the inning. The ball is tapped right in front of the plate is spinning backwards a little bit. Yachty pounces on it to make sure he picks up the baseball as it's on the corner of the plate. That means it's a fair ball. And the umpire was right on top of that, Todd Titchener. Not only was the umpire on top of it, so was number four. Ball one to Michael Walker, who struck out back in the second inning. Colin Ray struck out four and allowed four base hits. Walker sitting on four RBIs. about Michael Walker in the 33 strikeouts in the postseason of 2013 setting a rookie postseason record the Cardinals get into postseason they will be so dangerous because of this pitching staff we always want to get the right pieces going into postseason but the pieces have to include three good starting pitchers maybe four it's Jose Okendo working. Make sure that Reynolds gets the proper lead. And as we heard from Matt Holliday when he joined you in the booth, Jose's not afraid to yell at you. Take more, take more. That's his job, right? That, that's part of the description. Get him home. Walk up, base hit into right. Reynolds trotting to third. Mentioned earlier, Matt Kemp with nine outfield assists, so they do not take a chance there. Runners at the corner, second hit in the inning, and a chance for Matt Carpenter. Also, Reynolds holding up a bit to make sure that ball wasn't caught. But a nice at bat for Walk up. DraftKings.com, use the promo code CARDS, and today we're looking at the highest run support average for the National League starters. Waka and De La Rosa on that list. We'll see De La Rosa next four nights. Helixson was on that list, as well as Liriano. Tough 
I'd say 24 hours for Matt Carpenter. Ejected last night. He's 0 for 2 today. And got into it with the home plate umpire after his second strikeout. The first was on three pitches. The second on a check swing and punched out by the third base umpire who was behind the plate in game two. Baseball always provides a quick avenue to kind of fast redemption, though. All of a sudden, you get two hits today, three tomorrow, and all of a sudden, everything's great for Matt Carpenter. And he lifts a fly ball down that left field line, Upton. Can't get there. I think over the course of a long season, Dan, I mentioned we're three quarters of the way through, but there are times where you say, boy, he's just he's just not going to get a hit. Doesn't look good at the plate. I don't know what's going on with him. And we're talking about generic player X. And then two weeks later, he's seven for his last nine. Mm -hmm. He's carrying the team. It's just the, the ebb and flow of a season. You know, Colton Long's in that funk right now. But maybe three weeks from now, He's carrying this team offensively. Could very well happen. Two strikes on Carpenter. Is at third base in this ball game. Second base last night. Fill in for Wong. Then Wong had to come in. I just wonder if Matt, when he's in the field, has had any conversations with that third base umpire today. Friendly, of course. Or maybe with a little edge. I guess we missed our chance to mic him up. He did not. <laughs> he did not back off his. No, he did. His thought that that was actually said. It's the worst call he's ever had. As a pitcher, did you pay attention much if you knew you were starting as to whom would be behind the plate for that day? I wouldn't say paid attention a lot to it, but you certainly were aware of the guys that had big strike zones and the ones that had little ones. Yeah, and, and you realized, boy, you're going to have to be a little less liberal with, with a sinker down and away in terms of expecting to get a pitch. And, and you also, I, honestly, years ago, it was a lot more of an issue which umpire you could talk to and which you couldn't. There were plenty of umpires. John Kibler is one that comes to mind. Where you could say, you know, what, is that ball up, or where, and you'd have a conversation. Others, you bring up the subject, and you're shooting yourself in the foot. Two-two. Carpenter pulls it foul. Different game two in terms now of the rotation of umpires with both leagues. Yeah, there used to be an American League umpire and a National League umpire, and strike zones were different. Hard to imagine that, but it was true. Yes. And now you're just a major league umpire. I think that's been a great move, by the way. 2-2. Two -two. Just missed. There's Matt Carpenter knowing the strike zone. Three two to Carpenter. Carpenter drives it into right. Camp will make the catch. Reynolds tagging up from third. The throw to the plate. Not in time. That makes it a 5-1 St. Louis lead. Carpenter drives in his team leading 64th RBI. Good situational hitting for Matt Carpenter. He does his job, but so does Matt Kemp and Wright. Very good fundamentals getting behind the baseball and launching one with everything coming towards the plate. Right on the money, short hop. Hedges tries to scoop it and tag. That would have been an acrobatic play, but Reynolds would have been safe anyway. The second time in the series, the Padres appealing to see if a runner left early. Not the case. And in steps Tommy Pham. 
Bam is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. His 14 base hits in the big leagues this year. Seven of the 14 have gone for extra bases. He's still learning at this level, but you know, he brings something that I think we've seen from Randall Grichik. I think we've seen it from Stephen Piscotti. I think we've seen it from Garcia, a young player coming up, trying to make most of their opportunity, bringing energy to the ballpark, to their at-bats. I think he's been a good addition. At 324 at AAA this year, he's done just about everything he can at the minor league level. Now it's time to see if he can do it at this level and he's not a young kid in terms of you know baseball youth he's if done, you will he's done everything except stay healthy yes and perhaps out of his control to do that he's been in the wrong place at the wrong time a couple times the Cardinals have had 10 at bats with runners in scoring position today rolling in the fourth Another hanger. Sure was. Now a final, so the Cubs post a W today. They just keep on winning. Nine to three over Atlanta. So as we speak, Chicago now six games back of St. Louis. They just keep on winning. So does Pittsburgh. Still a couple of series remaining with the Cubs. One at Bush, one at Wrigley. Next home stand, the Cardinals have Washington, Pittsburgh, and Chicago. So that will be a telling home stand for St. Louis. Pitch taken low and outside, and it's into center field. How about that? Michael Walker with his first stolen base. Really, we're not paying any attention to Waka, and he just took off. Sometimes I think in this game you treat the pitcher as if they've never done anything athletic in their life. Look, the guy's he's an athlete. He's a big leader. You give him a second, he'll take it. Well, they weren't holding him on either. Right. You at least have to show that you're going to have the potential of throwing over to keep him close to the bat. Got to keep him honest. Ray already at 93 pitches, so we will see the bullpen today of the Padres. Hanging breaking ball, and it's lifted into right center. Melvin Upton Jr. makes the catch. Michael Walker with a base hit and a stolen base. Cardinals add to the lead. It's 5-1 midway through four.
Military Day. Every Sunday here at Petco Park in San Diego. Bottom of four rolls in. It's 5-1 Cardinals. As has been the case many times this year. Run support for Michael Waka. Five runs already. Between innings, saluting the military. You know, it was terrific as they were standing to attention and certainly, you know, hearing their song and 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 being very kind of respectful and calm, but the fact that when it's over, you have 30,000 people cheering for you afterwards. That's something they're used to, but the other part they're not used to, the 30,000 people expressing appreciation. Really a special thing that they've done here in San Diego over the years, and this goes way back, Dan. This is not a new thing for them, and they do it well. Melvin Upton Jr. leads it off. Melvin was a tremendous athlete, both football and basketball, out of the Virginia area. Was on the road to Florida State to play two sports at Florida State. He can run, but he's retired by Carpenter. Tampa Bay then gave him four million and said goodbye, Florida State. Hello, pro baseball. StubHub app is personalized just for you. Now with the StubHub app, you can select your favorite teams, artists, and discover new ones too. Start at StubHub. Let the fun find you. StubHub, the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals. Austin Hedges looks at a ball. Pitch has popped up and out of play. Betty Abernathy, a longtime Cardinals fan, passed away Thursday night. Betty, the mother of Cardinals VP of Stadium Operations, Joe Abernathy, grandmother of Memphis Redbirds account executive Phil Abernathy. There's a strike. She had been a Cardinals fan since marrying her husband, Tom. Since 1946. Cardinals baseball always a constant with the Abernathy's, whether it's be on radio or watching on television, never missed a game. We will miss her. And very sorry to hear of the loss of Betty Abernathy, longtime Cardinals fan who passed away Thursday night. We're thinking about the Abernathy family. Two two. earlier Dan Hedges playing today with Derek Norris getting hit on the wrist yesterday on a pitch where he's crossed up on so a little light on the bench for the Padres today Hedges getting the start Cardinals as we've mentioned also hoping to avoid the sweep today and you think about this road trip I think you and I would agree coming on to a tough West Coast road trip. If you play 500 on a road trip, you'd be happy. Maybe you want you want more, but if you play 500 on the road and just kind of dominate at home, that's a pretty good recipe. Popped up. But There's the, Peralta. But for the Cardinals to do that now, Dan, after dropping the first two, they're going to have have some work to do going forward on this trip. Now we mentioned certain ballparks we love coming to. I'd say Pittsburgh, one of the most scenic. Will be at one next weekend in San Francisco. I love coming here too. It's I a great too. ballpark, which opened up back in 2004. There's Clint Barmas. Really neat down the left field line. How they incorporated the historic brick warehouse, the Western Metal Supply Company. That dates back to 1909. Ties to the old west. But inside there, there's suites 
and a team store. Just something unique to build into the structure of the city. And it works. The whole stadium design works together. Back to Waka. And he makes the play. So Barma is one for two with a single. Ten moments ago, lining out to Michael Waka. All right, guys, looking forward to it. Colin Ray knocked out of this game. Cardinals leading 5-1. to one. And Despagne pitching for the second time in this series. Our Chevy call to the pen. He's worked as a starter. He did make a start against the Cardinals earlier this year. This will be his 26th appearance. And the first pitch taken high by Johnny Peralta. And we're underway here in the fifth. Going to get a lot of different arm angles from Audrey Samir Despagne. Looks like El Duque on the mound in many ways. And they're trying to figure out whether or not he can be a reliever or not. You've got two former starters in your bullpen in Despagne and Bud Norris. We've seen Norris a couple of times in this series as well. That's ripped into center field. Base hit for Johnny Peralta. Cardinals trying to get healthier as we move along towards the final month of the season. And with more on that, John Jay, let's check in with Pat Paris. Yeah, he's almost a forgotten man, Dan. Uh, of course, he's been on the disabled list since July 1st. He had that wrist surgically repaired in the offseason. It just hasn't been right for him, so he's taken this time off. But he says he feels now the best he's felt. In fact, he's going to be taking batting practice with the team coming up tomorrow when they uh, get set to take on the Diamondbacks in Phoenix and that's a big step for a guy who's of course you know perennially a guy who hits almost 300 and a guy that they could really use to add some depth right now in the outfield where they've had so many injuries and to add to that in Florida Matt Holiday is there they hope to get him on a treadmill later this week and then you're looking at two to three weeks after that but you're right John Jay Really the forgotten man and a guy that's been a constant on championship teams. One of the things he's always battled, I think, in his career is being underappreciated because he's not the 30 home run guy and he's not the flashy guy. He's not the 30 stolen base guy either. And, you know, he's been a good outfielder, patrolled center field well, does not have a flashy arm, and you think some of the skills of John Jay, but what he can do is hit, flat out hit. 
And when you've got a 300 hitter out of your lineup. It hurts. And I think the Cardinals miss him severely. That's a base hit into right off the bat of Hayward. Peralta. He'll dig for third as Kemp will dig it out of that corner in right field. Jason Hayward a double. On base for the third time today. Hayward absolutely tattooed this pitch. There's a pitch middle of the plate up. Hayward gets his arms extended and almost nails Peralta. A few jobs in your base runner. The first one is to just make sure your eyes are open and duck occasionally. This will be the 12th at bat with runners in scoring position for the Cardinals here today. So runners at second and third and a chance to buzz this game open. 5 1 the lead. Nobody out with Molina, Piscotti, and Reynolds coming up. Pat Murphy using an interpreter to help to convey his message to Despagne. Who defected along with Ledmez Diaz. He's in the Cardinals minor league system. Cardinals signed him to a four year $16 million deal and he has picked it up offensively here in the last month or so. Infield is in. And a pitch taken outside. It's not just the language barrier, but the cultural barrier of trying to get accustomed to this. And also trying to deal with being without your family and not knowing when you may see them again. 1 0 pitch. One ball, one strike on Molina, who's one for two. Things you notice when a starter goes to the bullpen, to me, one of the pitches that will go first is not your fastball necessarily. If you're a pitcher pitching multiple times in a week, and you'd say, well, you'd be tired, you wouldn't throw as hard. But I think it's the sharp break on the slider. I think that's the thing that's tougher to throw consistently out of the bullpen. Bit of a hanger there that he got away with. He's thrown three or four that just kind of spun up there. And I think the reason is you're trying to impart spin on the ball and Kind of use your hand to make the ball break last minute, and that requires strength. And if your arm's worn out, if you're not used to being a reliever, sometimes that's a tough thing to do. Here's a 2 2. But Cincinnati, they lose again today. Mm. They have dropped nine straight. They are 51 and 71. And currently 26 games back of St. Louis. 3-2 mm. pitch here to Yadier Molina. The Brewers have overtaken them for fourth place in the central. Of course, quite a bit of ways from making a difference between the Cardinals the Pirates and the Chicago Cubs the Dodgers also losers today for a fifth straight time Kershaw started that game Jensen couldn't close it out in the ninth inning it went extras and the Astros sweep the Dodgers at home Molina put it in play back to Despagne High throw they get the out the Dodgers 11 games below 500 on the road. Hmm. Fox Sports supports proud to team up with the Boys and Girls Club of America. Boys and Girls Clubs 
help young people reach their dreams. For more information, visit FoxSportsSupports.com. Here's Stephen Piscotti. Triple in two runs in the first and also grounded out to short. They'll intentionally walk him and pitch to Mark Reynolds. So with Arizona beating Cincinnati today and the Dodgers losing, Arizona is now only five games out in the National League West, and they have now won four straight, and the Cardinals are heading there. Adds a little bit more intrigue to that four-game set. Sure does, as if we need it anymore. Interesting move here to load him up to get to Reynolds. And maybe you're thinking with that slider, you can get Reynolds to chase, pick up a strikeout. You're also thinking double play. You're also thinking from the Cardinals' perspective, big inning. Well, you could get the big inning from Piscotty, too. And I, I think I get this move here only because of the strikeout potential. Reynolds certainly can hurt you, but if you can... Kind of get the strike out here. It just changes the whole complexion of this inning. Double play certainly also a possibility, but we know what Reynolds can do and is capable of when he gets a hold of one. One for two today. And that's the pitch there. If it's a little bit more middle outer half, we've seen Reynolds. That's the pitch he'll chase, and you can get him on on that type of pitch. And I think that's what they're thinking too. But we, again, we've seen him hang a few already this inning. You hang one to Reynolds, and he's a very good mistake hitter. Melvin Upton Jr. was in right center, now moves to left center. 1-0 pitch. Taken high, two balls, no strikes. Reynolds already with a grand slam this year. And that was against the Chicago Cubs. The chant of Let's Go Cardinals. A lot of Cardinal fans here in town. Two-o pitch. Little cutter outside corner. Pretty tough 2 0 pitch with the bases loaded. The 2 1 drops down. It'll, it'll give you that. The different arm angles sometimes, a quick pitch. 2 and 2 the count. Four career grand slams. Expect he'll take a little more off of this one. Hook him outside half. Bases loaded, full count. The next two Reynolds. Brown ball that's hit to short. Can they turn two? Out at second and double play.
Saturday, September 5th, 25,000 fans, ages 16 and older, take home the adult gray throwback jersey, courtesy of AT&T. Cardinals.com slash promotions. That is September 5th. There's Jed Jerko. He'll be the pinch hitter. The Cardinals 3 for 12 now with runners in scoring position today. And maybe a big miss in the top of the fifth inning. We talked about the momentum ball being passed to the Cardinals in the top of the first when we had a couple of Padres errors in a big inning for St. Louis. You just hope that that momentum ball wasn't passed back to the Padres there in the top of the fifth. Happy birthday to Greg Lilly. Works on our crew every single year we come through San Diego and still going strong at 81. Happy 81st birthday to Greg Lilly, our cameraman working hard today. Boy, he, he looks, sure doesn't look 82 to me. I don't know. No, 81. Oh, 81. A little bit low and a leadoff walk. So they get the double play with the bases loaded. One out and now a leadoff walk. Second walk issued by Michael. Let's take a look at our Kia in the driver's seat. Concerning Michael Walkup. Mentioned earlier that Arietta and Bumgarner both with 15 wins. Walker at 14 tied with Garrett Cole. Zach Greinke at 13. Garrett Cole has been stuck there nearly a month since he won that 14th game. Remember, walk in, Cole were matched up two starts ago, two that had 14 wins. Back to the top of the lineup, and Solarte in a blue pit in left field. Also flied out to center. Popped foul out of play. Mentioned the story last night that Solarte raised and lived with a former Cardinal, Roger Cedeno. He was part of the 2004 championship team that won the National League. And you do love to hear stories about guys that have toiled in the minor leagues and finally it just clicks. They catch on. He had nine years in the minors, Twins, Rangers. Came up with the Yankees and now here with San Diego. Chase that pitch and advancing Jerko after the strikeout. Number two today for Michael Walkup. Wild pitch charge to Walkup. Really hasn't been a swing and miss game for Michael Walker. We've had some games where he has had that, but it's been more of jam shots, pop ups. You know, not a lot of balls hit hard against Walker in this game. Allowed just four hits to go along with the two walks, but. Really not the dominating strikeout game, but you know what? You don't need that. You just have to find a way to win with with what you've got. Breaking ball, a good one. Spangenberg is 0 for 2. We've seen a lot of pitches like that today, though, from Walker. Whether it be the breaking ball, that one to change up, fastball, many have been up. Tenth overall selection in 2011. This man at the plate. Split time last year with Double A San Antonio, and his major league debut. 
2 2. You know, it seems a bit watching Waka in terms of how he's attacking the strike zone. Early on, really wasn't getting the strike low. Not that he was getting bad calls, but he just wasn't getting the, the pitch in the zone at the knees. And he tried to elevate a bit more, and he kind of just maybe gone too high and tried to work it up a little bit. But certainly going to get more damage if you stay up in the zone. Line drive out to left, backing up as Scotty makes the catch. What's on tap for the Cardinals? A trip to Arizona. Come your way tomorrow, 7:30. Fox Sports Midwest. Budweiser. What's on tap? Lynn and Ray. Robbie Ray is two and nine. Lance Lynn, looking to go to ten wins on the year. Brings in Matt Kemp. Cardinals face Ray today and Ray tomorrow. It's a little unusual. Colin Ray today, Robbie tomorrow. Two outs, man at second base, pitch taken high. And Danny, you're just a ray of sunshine. And you are of hope. Okay, we're done. It's awful. One ball, one strike. We only come here one time a year in Arizona one time in San Francisco. I miss coming out here a couple of times a year. I agree. You play so much in your division. Let's hit out of play. Now with interleague play, there's only so many games to go around. And so outside your division, you're seeing teams one time. I miss not going to New York a couple of times. Philly. Walker trying to nail down this game, and this is one of those nails you kind of hammer in if you can get past Matt Kemp in the fifth inning without any damage and a runner in scoring position. A little check swing and a foul ball. You know, every victory that a pitcher gets, and Walker's trying to get his 15th today, but every victory is a series of little victories along the way. Right pitch in the right situation, right pitch with a guy in scoring position. You win a lot of little victories, you get the big one. Here's a one two pitch. Two and two the count on Kemp. Sitting on 15 home runs. Again, took something off it. 76 miles an hour on that pitch. Looking at to the top of the six, the Cardinals will have Garcia, Waka, and Matt Carpenter. Swung on and missed in a strikeout for Matt Kemp as he slams his bat. Now that's a man.
on St. Louis. And our AT&T U-verse rewind. Cardinals picked up four runs in the first. That was a pickoff of Tommy Pham. Turned into an air. That could have been an inning-ending double play off the glove of Silvarte, and the Cardinals made him pay. Hayward, Molina, Piscotti all came through with hits. Three consecutive. It added up to a 4-0 lead after one. And the Cardinals have a 5-1 lead. Here's Greg Garcia. Garcia 0 for 2 today. Grounded out sharply to first. Lined out to center. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike 0 and 2. Minnesota wins their game over Baltimore. That's a key game in the wild card 4 3. Final in 12 innings. Second wild card is. I think even the traditionalists would have to say the wild card in general and then adding a second one it's been great for the game I think so I think everybody's happy with it keeps more markets involved longer into the season the, the pennant race becomes more kind of universally shared throughout Major League Baseball cities so there's a lot of ballparks whether it's your team trying to get that second wild card or whether you are having your team perform the role of being a spoiler either either one it makes the game much more interesting I think in the month of September Minnesota was a half game behind the Orioles at the start of play today in the wild card As Garcia grounds it slowly towards second base and out at first Spangenberg it took a little time for him to get it out of the glove and now Mike Matheny hops out of the dugout the Cardinals should take a look at it. How about Garcia hustling all the way down he gets jammed which often when you get jammed you don't get a good jump out of the box. But there's the little shovel throw and boy close play. Cardinals will not ask for a replay review on this. And that's why. Espanye by the way is in his. Second inning of work after coming in with a double switch. Jerko has taken over at short for the Padres. Here's an 0 1 pitch and a strike to walk up 0 and 2. Reminder again the start time tomorrow St. Louis time on Fox Sports Midwest will be at 830 830 St. Louis time. Walker is one for two and he's also picked up a stolen base Lynn and Ray tomorrow 830. CC Sabathia had to leave in the third inning for the Yankees today. He said those chronic knee issues. He said it for an MRI. Concern there. Late with the swing and a strikeout. First for Despondier. Mets have last check. We're leading their game again against the Rockies. And they're expected to get David Wright back in their lineup tomorrow. They have changed that everyday lineup considerably. Well, last time we saw them, we knew the pitching was good and getting better with guys coming up, Syndergaard coming to the big leagues, and Harvey back in their rotation. But the lineup was a little shaky. They've gotten a lot better. Carpenter rounds out sharply to Alonzo.
8,000 fans ages 16 and older will receive a replica 1967 World Series champions ring. This one of a kind replica has a detachable base and is wearable. Get your tickets for the September 4th Cardinals Pirates game at cardinals.com slash promotions. Matt Kemp last at bat broke his bat over his knee and I would not suggest trying that at home. Dan and I have both tried it before and it's really painful when it doesn't work. Hurt my leg. Me too. It's amazing to see Bo Jackson do that time and again or do it where he snapped it top of his head with the helmet. Two hops off the wall. Piscotti fired back into second base. Got that in quickly. And a leadoff double here in the bottom of the six for Justin Upton. He's two for three. Here's a pitch down in the zone. I just love what both Upton and Piscotti do. They didn't take anything for granted. Upton, even though he hit it off the wall and knew that a double was probably going to happen. He's still out of the box, and Piscotti didn't take it for granted either. Got to the ball quickly and got it in quickly. Playing the game right. Here's Alonzo. Single to left, scored back in the second inning. Then a key play in this game was runners at first and third. And he tapped one out in front of the plate that wound up being on the plate. Molina pounced on it, tagged him out. The threat was through. C Shack getting loose. Walker makes the play. Second time he's done that this afternoon. Look what I found. What well, happened with Barmas in the fourth, and now it happens with Alonzo. And Alonzo. I think he was thinking about actually breaking that bat over his knee. There's the earlier line drive. That one not hit quite as hard. Walk has been active today. Now it's Melvin Upton Jr. Seen some good defense from the Cardinals. And again, I'll point to just getting the ball, getting it in in a hurry. The outfielders have been doing that. You praise him for that. Peralta's had a couple of plays to his right. Molina the play it on top of home plate. Mark Reynolds a diving play to his right. There's been some good good defense today following a rough game two of the series. Yachty does have an error in this game but overall the Cardinals defense has been good. Here's a 1 1. Melvin changed his name before this season. Formerly went by BJ which stood for boss man junior. His dad known as the boss man. The 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two two. He's 0 for 2 today. It's hard to figure out why guys go on such a steep decline because Upton was at one point an outstanding player in the American League with Tampa Bay. His brother at second base. And that's hit out to left. Piscotti over and makes the catch. Got a good jump on it. And there's two down. You have tweeted us some of your photos using the hashtag MWDataStrongFan. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Austin Hedges has walked and popped out to short. Walker at 99 pitches. Very well could be his final inning this afternoon. More than likely it will be. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. He's looking ahead. He's not due up for a while, so you don't have to worry about that part of it. But with Ciszek up in the pen and Walker now at 100 pitches. And a couple of line drives, too, in this inning. I think that's another factor. The Cardinals, the track record this year too, Rick, is they have been extremely, and I mean extremely cautious with Michael Walker. Yeah, and, and why not? The 
There's a line drive. There's another out. Tommy Pham is there. This is our home run inning. The Gateway Honda home run dealers will donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation if the Cardinals hit a home run. Fam Peralta Hayward coming up. San Diego Padres at 61 and 62. Most consecutive seasons below 500. San Diego at four. The Mets look to change that along with the Cubs. Miami. So much promise going into the season. San Diego six back of Los Angeles could be five if they come back and win this game. Wouldn't that be something? Mm. Here's Tommy Pham, 0 for 2, walked and scored. First pitch taken for a ball. Think about Pittsburgh's long struggle of playing under 500 for what 20 years. And kind of ever since they broke through that, okay, we're going to not be a losing team anymore. We're going to be a 500 plus. They've gotten better and better and better. They had to go through that first hurdle first of becoming competitive, and then they just it's gotten become a powerhouse in the National League. Here's a one two. Got him. Strike out of Tommy Pham. Cardinals have struck out six times in this game. This curveball right on the outside corner. Tough pitch to hit. Second strikeout for Despagne. Peralta's Peralta that, is one four three. Yeah, and that at bat that Peralta had, Danny, you've already talked about it in our rewind, but that error in the first inning and the third baseman Solarte just seems like a key play in this game. Would have totally changed the complexion of that first inning and just shows you how important defense is. Huge. And again, a lot of things happened after that. You give Cardinals credit for, for adding on with the Three hits in a row from Hayward, Molina, and Piscotti, but he makes that play, and we may be looking at a 1 1 game right now. Two 0 pitch to Peralta. Let's see if they turn him loose on 3 0. Three and one. You mentioned it. Game one of the series. Hard for you to come to San Diego and not think of Tony Gwynn. Just thinking about him again. You in my mind again? 
such a just looked up and happened to see the number 19, the retired numbers in center field. Number six, Steve Garvey. 19 is Tony Gwynn. 31, Dave Winfield. Randy Jones. Number 35, Trevor Hoffman. 51, and of course, retired in baseball, number 42 for Jackie Robinson. Dick Enberg went into the Hall of Fame this year. Yes, he did. Congratulations to Dick. Hear his voice, I think the NFL, I think Merlin Olson. Oh, yeah. 3 2 pitch. Spoiled by Peralta. Mark Grant on the right. And when you think of the San Diego Padres and broadcasting, great player as well, Jerry Coleman. And that caught Peralta, so he's hit by the pitch. Jerry Coleman also quite the uh, war hero, hero as well. There's shots there of Ted Williams. Ted Williams in San Diego, renowned obviously in baseball, but certainly here in this town too. Many of his formative years spent here in San Diego. Hanging breaking ball again. I, I just wonder if Despagne is a little bit on fumes right now because he's yeah. flipped a few of those breaking balls up that have been just sitting on a tee saying, hit me. Managed to give his team a chance so far with a couple of zeros. He was on the ropes in that fifth inning, and again, he hasn't been consistent with the breaking ball. Some good ones, but you know, pitching like a guy that maybe not used to being a reliever. Here's a 1 1. Pulled fair inside the first baseline. Down into the right field corner. Hayward has his second double at least. They'll wave in Peralta. Throw to the plate, not in time. A triple for Jason Hayward. He's a home run away from the cycle. Six to one Cardinals. Big afternoon for Jason Hayward. This triple, there's the first baseman, Alonzo, holding the runner on, and as he goes off the bag, the ball hit behind him. And into the corner. Kemp gets it in quickly, but not quickly enough to get Peralta, who scores from first. Infield drawn in for Molina, and Yachty skies one into right center. Melvin Upton Jr. near the track makes the catch. That'll bring in Jason Hayward. That makes it 7-1 Cardinals. Molina, his second RBI today. He's up to 49. It's a nice add-on for the Cardinals after not doing so in the fifth inning. Here's Steven Piscotti, one of the big hits in this game, a triple to drive in two back in the first. Inning started with a strikeout of Tommy Pham. Peralta hit by a pitch, triple by Hayward, RBI, and the sack fly RBI off the bat of Yadier Molina. Fun to watch the Cardinals offense respond today. A lot of reasons to be kind of down in the dumps the last few days. Not very productive. 
Missed opportunities. That's well hit. Deep left and a long one off the bat of Piscotti. Eight to one Cardinals. Breaking balls just put on a tee for Piscotti. And Dan, you mentioned it. This does not look sharp this inning. And the Cardinals have tacked on three more. Fun to watch. Piscotti bloom at the big league level. That's ripped into left. Pitch that was up. Reynolds on his way to second base. And in with a double. Mark Reynolds is second double of the afternoon. A lot of balls hit hard in this inning, including this one. There's a breaking ball just sitting there. Despagne knew it. Well, we all knew it. Followed by Mark Reynolds jumping on a pitch. It took about a second and a half to get to the left field wall. Here's Greg Garcia. Three extra base hits in the inning. The Cardinals now with 10 hits today. And an 8 1 St. Louis lead. Sharply to second. And Garcia is the third and final out. And a productive inning here for the Cardinals at the top of the seventh. We'll stay here for the singing of God Bless America. All Cardinals here on this Sunday afternoon. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Before we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game as part of our salute to veterans, please stand and wave your flags in the salute of our military. When you do, Bank of America will donate $1 on behalf of each person in attendance to the Wounded Warrior Project. Now, please welcome back retired United States Navy Commander Abe Thompson. Please sing along as he presents God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the oceans wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. My home, sweet home.
Here's a look at our Mazda game summary. Eight to one Cardinals. Waka, six innings, five hits. Hayward closing in on what could be the cycle. Ray lasted four innings and Barmas one for two. Eight to one Cardinals. Brandon Moss takes over at first base. And Jonathan Broxton is your new pitcher. Lexi Amarista. We're five spots away from Jason Hayward in the Cardinals lineup, so he will hit one more time. Hayward, a single in the first, walked in the third, doubled in the fifth, a triple in the seventh, and who knows next time up. Chevy called to the pen. There's a look at Hayward, who's had a productive afternoon along with his teammates. 0 2 pitch. Also a good day for Piscotti, a good day for Reynolds offensively. Both of them with two extra base hits apiece. And really that's how you put together a lot of runs. You have multiple players with good games and the Cardinals certainly have had that today. Four in the first, three in the seventh, a run in the fourth. It's been fun to watch, Dan. Kind of what you expect almost from this Cardinals lineup. Broxton gets the strikeout to start at the bottom of the seventh. Final line on Michael Walkup. Six innings, one run, he was earned. Five hits, three strikeouts, walk two. Here's Jed Jerko. He's the all time leader in home runs by a Padre second baseman. 41 in his career, 30 for Mark Loretta. Did that in a hurry, didn't he? Sure did. Speaking of home runs, how about the Scotty's bomb in the left? That was a no doubter. 393 feet. Jericho part of a double switch, walked his first time up. And it's one ball to two strikes. Hyundai pitch arsenal for the big right hander. Kind of just comes right at you, doesn't he? Here it is. Yeah, nothing fancy. No. Nope. Really not trying to trick you much. The hard fastball, he throws a slider. The slider to me has been inconsistent. Here's a 2 2 pitch. And Broxton has gotten the first two with strikeouts. Well, Broxton, you know, he's not the extremely hard thrower that he once was, which he was upper 90s to triple digits, but still throws plenty hard. He's hit 94, 95 yeah. here today. Yeah, that's plenty, plenty hard enough, but the, the slider. Very important what the tilt is. Is it got downward movement to it? Sometimes the slider's a little flat. That last one had, again, not a big break to it, but enough to get Jerko. Here's Samarte. Fly to center. A blue base hit to left field and struck out. He is the sixth hardest to strike out, by the way. In the National League. That's one of the reasons why they have him at the top of the order. More times than not, he'll put the ball in play. Also gives you that versatility of being a switch hitter. Like him in the second spot. I, mean, I could see, you know, again, 
not my lineup to construct here but if if Jankowski becomes who they hope he will be down the road maybe you move Solarte to that second spot as a switch hitter I think there's some value in that not striking out a lot well, he doesn't run like Jankowski does so you get the speedster on in front of him I think that makes sense and plus he can do some damage with the 10 home runs and 49 RBIs he's a good player there's a one two pitch into center field and a base hit brings in Corey Spangenberg. A shot there of Mark Sweeney. There he is. Wound up being a outstanding major league pinch hitter. One of the toughest jobs in sports is to pinch hit. Played for the Cardinals. One of the real good people in our business, too. And he knows baseball. No question about that. Always good to see him. Spangenberg slaps it the other way and a fair ball down into the left field corner. So Marte will be stopped at third. Spangenberg, we mentioned he was a top pick by San Diego, 10th overall in 2011. And that was the year that the Cardinals took Colton Wong, also a pretty good second baseman out of Hawaii with the 22nd overall pick. So after two strikeouts, two base hits, and in steps Matt Kemp. Kemp, by the way, with that strikeout last time out, we saw that he broke his bat over his knee. Not something you'd expect somebody to do at a 14 game hitting streak, probably using that bat. Hitless today, over three. Two outs, two on. We're wondering, Gary Cole was the number one overall pick back in 2011. No pitch to Matt Kemp. Mark Zemchinski is getting loose in the pen. Randy Cho, Cardinals left-hander, getting loose. Rick mentioned earlier Tyler Lyons sent back to Memphis to clear room for Greg Garcia. So two lefties in the pen. That's fouled back. So the problem if you don't have a consistent slider that's just kind of nails every time you throw it is guys will stop looking for it. They'll just start looking at looking for the fastball only and they'll have a much higher probability of hitting it. You've got to keep them honest with that good breaking pitch. Like that. Washington post a victory today to stay five games back of New York. New York leading nine to three over Colorado in the ninth. Here's a two two pitch. Back to Broxton. The Padre strand two and Kemp hitless today. That'll send us to the eighth. Eight one St. Louis.
Sports Update with Jim Hayes. All right, thank you, Jim. Mark Zepchinski, our Chevy call to the pen. Three games that he's worked in this series. And his 12th appearance since coming over the trade from Cleveland. Always tough to be the lone lefty in a bullpen. He'll face Brandon Moss, who came in with the double switch to take over for Mark Reynolds at first base. And nice to uh, get Moss on track a little bit, too. He's been behind on a lot of pitches and certainly has the potential to catch fire and the Cardinals could use boy three or four guys to get hot all at the same time shift on here for Moss breaks his bat and it's going to be a hop throw to first and they just get Brandon Moss by a step so one pitch one out. score that 5-3 with the shift and the broken bat and it brings in Matt Carpenter Carpenter is hitless today he does have a sack fly RBI back in the fourth You'd have to say that both leadoff men in this series, not your prototypical leadoff type hitters, but that's gotten thrown out the window now. They really have so much of an emphasis put on on base percentage. A lot of guys aren't stealing bases anyway. Just looking to get on base any way you can. So the prototypical leadoff hitters left in this game, you, you might even be able to count them on one hand. Mm -hmm. You'd say Billy Hamilton's that, but he hasn't even really held on to that position. They've dropped him to eighth and ninth at times in Cincinnati, but he would be the kind of classic leadoff hitter. Zepchinski, very sharp with that slider and that at bat there with Carpenter. That's the pitch you've talked about time and again when you evaluate Mark Zepchinski as C Shack will come into the game. He's up for the second time. He's only as good as his slider. The Broxton needs the slider to augment his fastball, but Zepchinski is needs the slider or it's not going to work. Cardinals have struck out seven times after 16 Ks in game two of this series. Here's Tommy Pham. 0 for 3 with a walk and a run scored. As crazy as it sounds, a pickoff play. It turned into an error by Colin Ray. Has turned into a big play in this game. It was in the first inning. That error and the error that followed. And Ray just really unraveled after that in that first inning. Came back. At least got through four innings, but not what the Padres wanted out of him. Are you ready for the heat of Arizona? We head to the <laughs> desert tonight. A change of climate. Brought my light jacket. <laughs> and a ground ball to second. Nice pick. Bottom of the eighth rolls in when we come back. You're watching Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest. C Shack be coming on.
St. Louis Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Make a plan to make it home. And by Ford, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Steve Shishak, our Chevy, call to the pen. 43rd appearance for the Cardinal right-hander, combined with Miami. Slowly but surely getting a little bit better as we go along. Yeah, he's been a nice pickup, I think, and certainly has a good upside when you think about important games down the stretch. What are you going to do in the seventh and eighth inning? And I think kind of the the jury's still out a bit as to what Shishak could do the rest of this season and maybe there's a beyond for him too that's that's certainly interesting where he could fit in but with Jordan Walden not coming back as expected we're really hoping to see him again he was so good in the early going there's that, that eighth inning right hander role that's still out there want to know the count on Justin Upton Alonzo on deck and then Melvin Upton Jr. So C-Shack gets the heart of this lineup, home half of the eighth. Coming up, looking ahead to the ninth, a chance for Jason Hayward to hit for the cycle. He's a home run away. I wonder if we'll see Rosenthal in the ninth inning. I would guess we would. Need some work. What happens to a pitcher trying to explain to the folks at home when you're skipped to start late in season? That may happen with Walker, may happen with Martinez, may not. But in terms of, yes, you get the rest, but what it does for your rhythm as a pitcher is this is skied into right center. And Pham wants it for the out. I think it's a huge gamble when you skip a start. And I get it. I get the innings question, but... You're talking about somebody being, especially if they're right on. If you skip a whole start, you're talking about 10 days without pitching. And pitching is such a feel thing. I prefer the get him a couple extra days and just put him in a different spot in your rotation. Use an off day maybe to just kind of skip for one guy, but not everybody else. So they're all on five days, but maybe you're on seven days rest, let's say, as opposed to two, nearly two weeks. Feels like that anyway. It just... I think you're certainly gambling when you take a pitcher out of a rotation for even a short period of time. There's so much cre creatures of habit. All pitchers are, all players are. But it's kind of become a necessary evil, hasn't it, Dan? With the sure innings, has. innings concerns? No doubt. By the way, the last Cardinal to hit for the cycle was Mike Redzelonic, who had a terrific year back in 2005 for St. Louis, and that was a, a win over Milwaukee. And Hayward will have a chance to do that coming up at the top of the ninth. The first of his career, the Cardinals have 16 in their history. The last prior to that in 2005 was 1996. And he's sitting in the Cardinals dugout hitting coach John Mabry. Here's Jankowski. <laughs> hit the other way, base hit. I'm still happy he wasn't in the starting lineup. I don't think I ever have recall the time you've been higher on a player. I mean, you've, you've talked about him a lot today. Well, and, and there's just something about the way he goes about his plate appearances. He First of all, he's been jumping on first pitches. He's, he's aggressive. And they talk a lot about his speed, which I think, you know, that I don't have to see that, that you tell me he steals 71 bases in double-A, the guy can run. So, and the high batting average in double-A, but... His approach to hit the ball the other way and up the middle 
just seems like he's got a good idea what he's doing. How about the bunt last night? The bunt that's handling the bat. Yeah, I just and I, you know, you typically reserve Dan with a young player because maybe he's just having a good day or a good week, and you don't want to get overly excited about him, but. What's interesting about the Cardinals and their cycles, by the way, Grizzolanik did it at home, and the last cycle at home prior to that was Ray Langford. And then the only other time at home was Lou Brock. So the majority of these have been done on the road. The 2 2 pitch to Austin Hedges. Thought it was funny that you kind of came up with the tidbit that Matt Kemp had the cycle and didn't even know it. Got the third, had no idea. And it was the first for the Padres in their history. I wouldn't say players are often overly conscious of it. They know they're having a good day, though, clearly. And Jason Hayward is having a good day. Can it be a great day? Stew up second when we come back. Stay tuned. Craig Kimbrell, our Chevy, called to the pen, the closer for the San Diego Padres in one of the game's best over the last handful of years. Was traded by Atlanta to San Diego. While he has not been as dominant, he's still one of the best. 35 saves, third in the National League. He's behind Melanson and Trevor Rosenthal. Has a unique style. The way he comes set. And just an unhittable at times fastball and breaking ball. They're both devastating. He used to actually take his arm and have it behind his back. And he said he stopped that five years ago because it became too painful for him. There's a knee buckling breaking ball to Johnny Peralta. Saved 185 games, made four All Star appearances with the Braves. You won't see many players in the game who have that sharp a breaking ball. The one we just saw there, way off the plate, it was a ball, but he just has just electric stuff. 
So if Hayward hits a home run, he's going to earn it against his former teammate. You got me excited about the potential cycle here, Dan. We shall see. I am on the edge of my seat, literally. It's been a long game. 3-1 pitch. Get out of play. How did he become a hard thrower? He was from throwing from his knees. He had broken his foot, so he went to his knees. And he said, the best thing for me that could have happened was breaking my foot. He started a long toss from my knees. And slowly but surely, as I did that, my arm, this is Kimbrell, he said that's what really gave him the explosiveness and the whip of being able to throw the ball hard. He said it just isolated different areas of the upper body and the shoulder. It strengthened them. That pitch at 97. Isn't it funny how athletes will improvise? You, know, you remember Pat Meshek? You know, he got hurt in high school. His arm hurt, so he's changed his arm angle and all of a sudden found something that nobody could hit and end up a big league pitcher. It all started. And it, it all started. Like that. Three two. And it's a walk to Peralta. This got right a telecast presented by the authority of the Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Jason Hayward has singled, walked, doubled, then tripled. Average up to 291. Who would have thought that at the end of April? Not only are you facing one of the best pitchers in the game, but shadows have become a factor as well. Hayward is sitting on 11 home runs. Picked up an RBI number 44 earlier in the game. And has scored two runs. One ball, one strike. I had to guess, I would say there's not a thought in his mind right now about trying to hit a home run. I think he's trying to just drive the baseball somewhere and you know good hitters will tell you that sometimes the home run is just just happens. You drive the ball and you just happen to catch it right. You get a home run. He just wants to square it up somewhere which is hard enough against Kimbrell. The 2 1 pitch to Hayward. Popped up left side. The cycle will have to wait. And let's hope that's his final plate appearance of the afternoon. You don't want you don't want eight hits in a row. I see your version of it. You were thinking you're a glass half full guy. I should have been thinking that way. You were thinking you don't want to see him hit the 14. <laughs> I know what you were thinking. Uh huh. Hey, if we go that far, maybe Piscotti gets a cycle too. Get a triple, point. triple and a homer. He's got the hard ones. Here's Tony Cruz. He'll pinch hit. And the first pitch is strike. Well, Tony, you don't get a lot of playing time, but here's the deal. I know you've been sitting all weekend. You haven't played hardly all year. I'm going to give you a chance against Craig Kimbrell. Now go get him. Good luck. We're all counting on you. And we're going to add some shadows for you. Just to amp up that degree of difficulty a bit more. And it's going to be Kevin Segrist, not Trevor Rosenthal. 
in the bottom of the ninth. And I understand where you're going with it with Rosenthal and you're saying well there hasn't been a lot of opportunities for him recently and there's Segrist. I just look at it anytime I can rest him. Yeah. You know Rosenthal and I, I'm sure that's the thought process for the Cardinals. And, and if it, he gets rest he is just dominant. And, and part of my thought had to do with rest too but it's more rest for a guy like Seth Manus who I think could use it yes. four or five days in a row off. And, Segrist still up among the league leaders in games appeared in as well. He's at 60. And Randy Choate also. So I really thought maybe going back to those guys might might be good to stay away from him. Carlos Villanueva had a bad game. And Manus both. And Randy. All three of them not as good their last time out. And there are times where you say, well, you've got to get him back out there to get the good feeling. But, you know, they've been in 60-plus games. The rest may be better. 3 2 pitch. Foul back. Kimbrell has walked 18 this year, struck out 66. So you're Pat Murphy and you're saying, the last thing I want to see right now <laughs> is this game, and they do have an off day tomorrow, but this game go any deeper with Craig Kimbrell, who's had 19 pitches. It's the fine line of getting work, but yet you don't want too much for this guy. I'm sure he has a number in, in mind. Number of pitches that will get over the threshold and they would get him out if it came to that. Tony Cruz gets us a little closer to that number. What'd you guess that would be? 30 max, but 25 even might be the right number. He's going to say 30. Here's a 3 2. Chopped foul. I've never liked the getting work mentality. I get it. I understand it. And I understand the phrase for a closer to say, well, you're just going to go out there and get some work. If you go in there with that mentality, I mean, you are asking for trouble. And, and you're almost denying that, that, it, that it's a big league game that matters. And you've got a job to do. Go get people out. It's another 3-2. And another foul ball. If you look at it as just kind of a walk in the park where I'm just going to kind of, you know, tune up a little bit, then they'll tune you up all right. Ropes hit everywhere. Yeah, this game is so unforgiving in so many ways. Why would you want to practice not competing just because the score is 8-1? to one? Full count delivery again. Foul back. will be right back. He is uh, chastising the fans below us for not making the play on that foul ball. <laughs> Welcome back, Dan. <laughs> I'm here. You're pretty harsh on the young lady. Got to catch that. You got to be ready at all times. You know, did I ever tell you about that time in Milwaukee? Yes, you did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, the ball, ball came ball. up in the booth and yep. it fell around the floor and it rolled over and you picked it up. I, I get it. After it almost broke my hand. But anyway, it was really hard. I protected Al. 
There's ball one to Steven Piscotti. One ball, one strike. So the pitch count at 26 for Kimbrell. Mentioned last night, the Padres have an awful lot of games at home in September. Road trip begins for them Tuesday night. They'll go through Washington and Philadelphia. And then come home, interleague play with Texas. And then they have the Dodgers for four, three with Colorado. So their season could be defined in that first couple of weeks of September. Three and one. And Piscotti pops it up. Out of play. And there's still three more outs to get, but can you imagine the unhappy flight to Phoenix if the Cardinals hadn't responded like they did today? Eight runs on ten hits as they hit here in the ninth inning and really been an impressive offensive day and an impressive defensive day for that matter. Good start for Michael Waka. Six solid innings and it's nice to see them all respond that way. Otherwise, boy, tough, tough trip to Phoenix. Otherwise, Piscotti, a high drive, deep left center field. Did he get another? It's gone. His second home run. Stephen Piscotti takes Craig Kimbrell deep. Have a day, Stephen Piscotti. On base four times. Triple walk, two homers. And what an afternoon for the rookie here in San Diego. Did I say this was Jason Hayward's day? I take it back. It's Hayward and Piscotti's day. That off of Craig Kimbrell. Piscotti now up to four home runs in his young major league career. 10-1 St. Louis.
Kevin Quackenbush, our Chevy, called to the pen. This is also a byproduct of getting to Kimbrell. You didn't want to do this either. Steven Piscotti with two home runs, 10 to 1 Cardinals. St. Louis, 11 hits, 10 runs, and a little fun on this Sunday afternoon. What a nice moment for Piscotti, 397 feet that time. A couple of long home runs for this afternoon. The day he will not soon forget. Peter Borges, 0 for 2 this weekend, and he's 0 for his last 19. The Mets have their first series sweep in franchise history at Coors Field today. So they're five in front of Washington. Logan Verrett replacing Matt Harvey in a spot start was terrific. Breaking ball and a strike. Hayward and Piscotti on base eight times in this game combined. Think about the extra base hits in this game, too. Hayward had two. Piscotti, three. Reynolds, two. And a very nice offensive day. Just, just short and the pick at first Steven Piscotti what a day for the rookie two home runs first multi homer day of his young career Kevin Segrist is into the ball game for St. Louis. 10 to 1, the Cardinals have the lead. Steven Piscotti, two home runs, five driven in of the 10 for the St. Louis Cardinals here today. Appearance number 61 for Kevin Segrist. A lot of changes defensively for the Cardinals behind Kevin Segrist. Cruz will be catching him. Board just stays in in center. It looks like our country's finest have seen enough. Time to go back to work. 
Great having our military here this afternoon. A lot of wonderful tributes today. Our Budweiser player of the game, no surprise, Steven Piscotti. Three for four, the five RBIs. The Cardinals hold on. It's a win for Michael Waka. And he would be tied with Bumgarner of San Francisco, Arietta of Chicago. Tops with 15 wins in the National League. So back to the earlier comment, is Sigrist in here to get some work, or is he in here to compete? Our Chevy called to the pen. And there's the 60 appearances I was talking about, Dan, that made, made me think you might be a little shy about using him in this particular game. But you could say the same thing about Seth Manus and Choate. Trevor Rosenthal, the other choices. This is Steven Piscotti's 30th Major League game. I think of the impact he's already had on this club. Two triples, nine doubles, four home runs, 18 RBIs in his first 30 games. Well hit into center field. Off the wall, played by Borges perfectly. And Brent Wallace trotting in into second base with a double. As a pinch hitter in this series, two for three with a home run and a double. That's his ninth pinch hit of the season. He's become a valuable weapon for the Padres off the bench. And Seager's not an easy guy to square up. Get that ball right on the nose. Well, you at well, you said earlier, Dan, you asked where would the Cardinals be without the contributions of Steven Piscotti, and what was my answer to you? San Diego. And then you kind of slapped me around a little bit, and I said, no, it's actually a very good question. We did that off the air. But the reality is his contribution has been the right place at the right time with the injuries. And so you get young guys into the flow and you'd say Tommy Pham is like that and maybe Garcia can be like that then you get other people back it just makes you better well your statement left uh, such a lasting impression on me I forgot <laughs> you could just roll your eyes at me as I recall <laughs> not for the first time Jed Jericho with the runner at second base his third plate appearance today So if the Cardinals hold on, lead stays at six and a half over Chicago, potentially could be four and a half over Pittsburgh, depending on what happens tonight in their game. Cardinals with a win would improve to six games above 500 on the road. 17 above 500 against the West. Speed pitch there from Seagrist. We had quite a few looks at uh, Mike Matheny last night during the game, and there were some times where he just seemed fed up, tired, mad, aggravated. Tight, whatever you want to say. He, he just didn't, <laughs> wasn't a happy camper here last night. Understandable. Nice to see him smiling again. Last two nights make a case they were 
in terms of back to back games the ugliest of the season yeah. for the Cardinals. I think he can make that case. Pointed out in our open that this is a club that has been not only winning games, but they're so consistent in terms of long losing streaks. They they don't have them. One four-game losing streak, two three-game losing streaks. That is unheard of. The Cardinals far and away the best team in baseball as far as that is concerned. And a base hit into left. Wallace will stop at third. And Segrist has allowed a couple of base hits. And now you, you start thinking if you're Mike Matheny, similar to what Murphy had to do with San Diego and Kimbrell, how much do you want Segrist to pitch here in the ninth of a 10-1 game? He's thrown some good pitches. That one kind of caught a little bit more of the plate than he wanted. And I think, again, there's a pitch count in mind for Kevin Segrist here in the ninth inning. Kimbrell got right up to that 30 number that you threw out there, Dan. And he was out. I don't know if I'd go that deep with Seagrass. No, I would agree. You don't have an off day for a while. You've got a big series coming up with Arizona. But he who's typically next? has been your, your setup man. Who's next? That's the question. Some stirring right now in the Cardinals bullpen. You certainly could go back to being a waiver, couldn't you? I think that'd be my choice, but it looks like that might be Seth Manus. Long way out there to see him. It is. And that's one of the guys you least want to see up right now. As you've talked about before, it's not just coming into live action, but doing this. Getting right. a baseball, getting loose, getting ready. He has thrown a ton this year. Popped up. Cruz with room. Makes the catch. Our number one. I think at this point you tell Seth Manus, okay, slow, slow your roll a little bit. Don't, don't, you don't have to throw in a hurry. We're not going to need you right away. Just kind of go along with the game here and hold the baseball. He is one guy, Dan, I will say, that doesn't mind throwing a lot. Seems to be built for that. Spangenberg, one for four today. Toronto post a victory today. 12 to 5 over the Angels. Is that a swing or do you get hit by the pitch? I thought it hit the knob of the bat, but the home plate umpire says it's a hit by pitch. I mean, it hurts either way, whether it hits the knob of the bat or hits your hand. Spangenberg. Reacted right away the ball coming in and what does it hit the knob or the hand? Well Maybe a little, a little bit, bit of both a little bit of both Now you've got Segrist in facing Matt Kemp with the bases loaded, although Mike Matheny may want to have that looked at. And he does. That's interesting to me. If it hits both, what is it? If it hits, if, does it matter which it hits first? Or if it hits them simultaneously? Is it, which overrules the other? I don't know. I don't know that I've ever seen that call in question before no. seen plenty of times where a hitter swings in 
as they swing. They're hit by a pitch. Right. But the real question here is what did it hit? The knob of the bat or his hand? Just showed a replay up on their, their new video board here at Petco Park. To me, it hit the knob of the bat. Well, it had that reaction first. It had the sound of that first from no up doubt. here. Yep. It, it appeared that it hit the knob of the bat. But, again, the fact that he's in pain, you kind of have to throw that out because it's going to hurt either way. So the Cardinals are challenging. Is this a hit by pitch or not? certainly makes sense for Mike to challenge this. You're in the ninth inning. Why not? be one of those plays too Rick where you stay with the call on the field because you just can't you just can't tell so the call stands and so Matt Kemp will hit with the bases loaded I think it hits the knob of the bat frankly agreed Well, regardless, it's bases loaded. Matt Kemp a chance to extend his hit streak to 15 games. He's hitless today. 0 for 4. strike. So now Segrist is closing into that territory we talked about with Kimbrell. 20 or more pitches. Right. And he's also throwing pitches under stress. This is not one of your, you know, this get a ground ball, a little pop up. And, I mean, it's pitching with bases loaded. No, the score is not tight, but it's still a stress situation. This is your primary setup man pitching in a 10-1 game. A well, long ways to go until your next off day in a big series coming up with Arizona. You'd have to think about Randy Choate, and as we say that, Choate now is up and throwing. And that's really also not a very positive turn of events that you've got your eighth inning guy pitching the ninth inning and you've actually had to get two relievers loose. You have two relievers loose in the ninth inning of a game that's 10 to 1. The 2-2. Two -two.
That's a base hit into left center. Two runs will score. Kemp now extends his hitting streak. He's got a new game bat because he broke his last one over his knee. He is now hitting 15 straight games. Here's Upton. Here's pitch number 24 of the inning. Strike one, and again, it catches the home plate umpire. Guess the Cardinals thinking now is if they could get Upton out quickly, which is not certainly an easy thing to do, then you maybe hope that Seegers can finish it out against the left hander Alonzo. But if he gives up a hit or allows Upton to reach base, then you go to Choate, then Manus. Here's a 1 1. And the one-two pitch. Two down. That's going to be it for Segrist. So you got the lefty Choate. And he'll face Yonder Alonzo. So 27 is the number. That was it. Our Chevy call to the pen takes you to Randy Choate, 60th appearance, who just won back of Segrist. He's got Alonzo. And then you have Jankowski after that. He just assumed ended right here. Trevor Rosenthal starts throwing. A little more active ninth inning than the Cardinals had hoped for. But 
It'll still feel good if Choate can finish this off. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Yonder Alonso. Slider taken low, two balls, no strikes. Fielders indifference. Matt Kemp at second base. Stop it first and choke to the bag. And that's how this game comes to a close. And who else to highlight in this game today other than Steven Piscotti? What a day. Well, we saw the game end on a nice defensive play. There were plenty of those, but it was the offensive punch of Steven Piscotti and Jason Hayward. That was the difference between the two of them number of big hits in this game two home runs five RBIs for Piscotti and a lot of support again for Michael Waka and his 50